Yeah, I mean, I mean, we've done red teaming. I mean, we've done red teaming for like, you know, Fortune 5 companies. We've done red teaming mm. across most sectors. I mean, we've we've crawled across fields in really dodgy ghillie suits trying to evade armed security guards. We set up a fake ID production line in a courtyard hotel. That was really cool because what was happening was a friend of mine, and this was because we had to breach this this oil manufacturer, this oil plant, right? So we had to breach this plant. So it's midnight. We're in the courtyard in some random town in the US. And we've literally got like, okay, here's here's the picture production, which then gets cut onto a card. We bought a laminating machine. And my friend was remotely like de-aging us all. So we looked like our IDs were a few years old. The courtyard staff were a bit I think confused, concerned because of what we were doing. But yeah, so we had to break into this oil manufacturing plant and we had to, sorry, oil components, right? So they were making all the components for oil drilling, right? So we had to break into that. So we went in in the day with these fake IDs and we had these USB payloads and blah, blah, blah. And then at night we had to sort of get in there, which was this this crazy scene because this train pulled up, this freight train pulled up at 1 a.m. in the morning and it, it felt like we were in a scene from the X-Files. It was very odd. So we had that. I mean, me and two guys that I worked with, we were trying to breach a, a retail for a really large retail company. We ended up spending 30 minutes crouched under a, a truck. So the truck was parked. We crouched under it. I actually can't go into the, the specifics of that story in any kind of public forum. Yeah, I mean, there's been a bunch of different stuff. I mean, we've yeah. we've hung out of windows, six floors up, doing work for this large education system that we do work with. Yeah. We've been chased through stores by security guards. We got stopped by the cops who pointed guns at us once. That was kind of entertaining. I mean, that was kind of amusing because it was Halloween. And this was like in the first few years of Occam Sex. So me and one of the other guys who actually now runs development we thought it would be really funny to wear Halloween masks while we did this red team project. So we're running around at night in camouflage, trying to break into this bank building in the middle of nowhere, New Jersey. And then half an hour later, we were trying to break into a branch on a strip mall. And these cops came, we ducked down in the car and then we drove out and then the squad cars came after us. They pulled us over and we jumped out of the car wearing oh camouflage. My. And it's like, Oh God. Oh um, my. Yeah. I mean, there's been, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, we can keep going forever. I mean, there was the time that someone breached, and this is actually quite amusing. So we wrote an article, which was called, I think it was called Tales from the Red Team Crypt, because we thought we were being funny. And we wrote it in the perspective of the target. So we had, we had to breach this giant facility. And it was it was a manufacturing, shipping, logistics, and, and admin. So one of our guys breached them because he was wearing a camouflage baseball cap so the key to everyone here is know your target situational awareness dress like them so what was interesting was he wore this camouflage hat went to the smoking area and then basically they let him in right he just tapped on the door like he was locked out and they let him in and then he just walked into the environment he hid under a desk and then plugged into the network but what was interesting was at the same time we had to run a diversion to, to keep the security guards at bay. So I walked in the front door wearing a suit and I was actually saying I was there to do an audit from a fake auditing firm. So I showed them this paper. I'm here from this. And then over the course of about five minutes, more and more security guards began to amass around me. They called the client who hired us. He said, I have no idea who that guy is. Right. So then so then what's going on? All these guys are around me and they're all getting kind of annoyed and aggressive. And then basically they escorted me out. But meanwhile, the real attack had gone on off to the side. We plugged in, network over, have a nice day. So that was fun. Um, yeah, I mean, we broke into a research lab that was meant to be really secret because what we did was we sat in the coffee shop opposite the research lab and just made friends with the developers who came in to buy coffee every day. At the end of the week, they invited us in for a happy hour. And then one of the guys just walked off to go to the bathroom, plugged the USB drive in, game over. Wow. I mean, 
it's it's like a fun time. I mean, it just sounds crazy. I mean, so you got chased by police. I mean, that sounds particularly crazy. <laughs> yeah, we got two squad cars pulled up behind us, and the the cops in the first car got out and pointed guns at us, and the guys in the side in the back came around the sides. So we got that. We got chased. I mean, we got chased through a giant store once by the security guards because what we were trying to do, we I mean, we'd already done our work, and so we were just trying to get extra points. So there was this there was this tiny window into the store's data center. So our head of development again, he's quite he's quite small. So we were trying to shove him through the window, and then and so we're pushing him through. So he's kind of half in, half out. And then the security guards are running around. So I'm like, all right, get him out. Because there was there was work going on and they got an alert. So we pulled him and then we're moving through the store. And then these guys are chasing us. And it was just, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, and I should I should acknowledge that that Christian Kimball has been put into lots of like, like tricky situations where we have tried to shove him through windows because he is smaller than we are. And he's been and he's been a good sport at picking locks six floors up while we were out on a balcony and stuff like that. So oh, I, I guess a shout out to Christian there for all the red team work that yes. he's done in, in the past. Yeah. yeah. My next question for that was going to be what, what advice have you got in that situation? But I think you, you've kind of just said it kind of what document everything really well, make sure you're always I was going to say staying in scope, but I imagine if it's red team, most things are in scope, so yeah. Make sure you've got your uh, make sure you've get you've got your get out of jail card right or testing mm-hmm. authorization form. And I mean, mm-hmm. even if you have that, I mean, again, there's another story, right? I mean, there's this. Sorry, just one one final. No, story. no, no, no. Honestly, no, no. Don't be no. Keep going, keep going. When I was at KPMG, there was a guy who was tasked with doing a Wi-Fi assessment of like the third floor of a of a an office block, right? So he sat outside on a picnic table with his computer and his antenna and started breaching it. And after about 10 minutes, I don't know, squad cars poured up, SWAT van pulls up, helicopters are flying over. And and he got busted and he showed them his get out of jail card and he said, we don't care, you're coming with us because the target was like the third floor, but... The CIA was like the fourth floor. The NSA was the second floor. And it was just, it was bad. So even if you have a scan and or a test and authorization form, make sure you know where your lawyers are to call in those situations. Because okay. we've seen people just get those layers like thrown away. Like, I don't care about this. You're in trouble. So yeah, make yeah. sure you got your test and authorization form or get out of jail card as, as we yeah. would call it. Cool. Yeah. Good advice.